Hello and uh, welcome to the first in a short series of videos which uh, is going to cover the basics of using Fantasy Grounds. Uh, these videos are aimed at the first time user uh, or uh, people who are considering buying the software and would like to know a little bit more about what it does. Uh, so we've assumed here that you've downloaded the uh, uh, demo, uh, you've installed the software and you have booted it up and this is your start screen. Uh, now what you will see here might differ from mine, uh, particularly up the top right here, uh, because if you've got the demo version it'll give you a version number plus it'll say demo. It's not going to say ultimate. Uh, that's a different license type. Uh, so, other, but otherwise, the screen should be pretty much the same as what you see here. Uh, now, there's some important information on the start screen. Uh, these uh, three buttons here, the getting started buttons, uh, these, if you click on them, will take you to the user manual, user guides, and you can watch some videos. Uh, so these are quite important things, and this is what I would recommend that you do to start with. Um, if you go to the user manual, for example, uh, then it will take you to the actual user module, which is a PDF, which covers pretty much all the aspects of using Fantasy Grounds, um, and it uh, is a wealth of information on how to use it. It kind of walks you through the whole thing. If you look at, uh, click on the user guides, it'll take you to the wiki page, and uh, this will again give you uh, links to various things which you can click on to see um, uh, different aspects of the software. Uh, and also you can click on the videos one, which takes you to a page uh, with links to various videos on how to uh, use the software. So there's quite a lot of help there. And I would recommend that you take some time to have a read of those uh, items. Uh, you can also uh, go to the forums from here or, or view the uh, frequently asked questions. Uh, you can visit the store and uh, you've got latest uh, release notes and uh, announcements as well. So there's a lot of uh, links here which um, will give you a lot of uh, good guidance as to what you're doing and how to uh, use the software. The buttons down the uh, left hand side here um, are where you're going to be uh, mainly concerned with when you start up Fantasy Grounds and it'll depend on whether you're a dungeon master or whether you're a player as to which of these you're going to be uh, using most frequently. If you're a dungeon master, then the two that you're going to be using is the load and create new campaigns. If we click on load campaign, then this will take you to a list of campaigns which you have already created in Fantasy Grounds. Uh, again, yours is going to be different from mine because obviously I've got a lot of campaigns here um, and so uh, there are many of them. You may well have very few. Uh, so if you wanted to load a campaign, all we would do is to scroll down our list uh, and actually then click on uh, what the one that you want and then just click the start button. You'll see that uh, below the uh, list of campaigns, we've got the campaign details. Uh, we've got a username, potentially. We've also got a password. The username defaults to GM. Uh, you can edit that and change that to whatever you like. And you can also add in a password if you wanted to. This means that anybody joining your game will need to enter that password. So obviously, they'll need to know what the password is. Uh, also below that is a list of extensions, and again, you're maybe going to have very few or none or a lot, depending on what you've purchased, etc., etc. Uh, and if you want uh, an extension to uh, be part of your campaign, then you just light it up by clicking on uh, the buttons here. And if we wanted, say, the Lost Minds of Fandelver desktop decal, we'd click on that, it would light up, and that would load this extension. Uh, on the right hand panel, we've got the information that your players are going to need to join the campaign. Uh, this information here, the internal IP addresses, is, is for your own use for setting up port forwarding if it's necessary. Uh, this is also how uh, people would connect to your host computer if they were playing on a local area network. This would be the uh, internal address that they would uh, put into the join screen. Uh, you can also retrieve your external address, which you can give to your players to join, or you can create an alias, uh, which is just a, 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 
uh, random num uh, random words and uh, you give that to your players as well so that they can join your campaign and we've got the connection test to see that everything is running properly uh, so that's the load campaign button once you have uh, sorted all of that out uh, we just click start uh, if we look at the create new campaign uh, then it's pretty much the same kind of screen over to the right hand side here uh, but we need to actually give the uh, campaign a name uh, so let's just do that uh, we can again set the username here it defaults to GM but you can put in uh, whatever you like and again you can create a password uh, if you wanted to Below that you've got the rule sets which you've got available. Again, you're going to see this differently depending on what rule sets you've purchased um, or what state of license that you have, etc. Uh, in this case, let's just click the 5e one. And you'll see that this opens up the list of extensions again that you have available. And again, you can just click these to see uh, any one that you actually want to include uh, in this campaign. Let's click the 5e Wizards theme gives you some information about the license type etc and once we've got that far once we've filled in all the information again we just click the start button and the campaign will be created uh, and it'll be loaded up now if you're a player uh, then you'll be wanting the join game uh, button uh, and this is simply a question of adding in your username and then the host address now the host address is uh, either the uh, alias that we saw on the screen here so that would be the alias or it could be the external IP address depending on what the dungeon master has given you uh, so that goes into the right hand box and you need to type in a username in here uh, and that's uh, obviously whatever username you want it doesn't matter what it is as long as there's no two people with the same username that will cause problems uh, each uh, player should the joining a game should have a, a unique username uh, once you've filled in these two boxes, then you click on the start button. Uh, the host address, as I said earlier, if it's uh, if you're working on a local area network, will be the computer, uh, the actual computer's IP address, internal IP address. And if you uh, have already started up an instance of Fantasy Grounds and want to create a second instance so that you can join your own game as a dungeon master, then you use this uh, local host in here. And that means that the second instance can be uh, joined to the main uh, one that's running and you'll be able to see the DM view and the uh, player's view at the same time on, on two different screens if you've got them, etc. So that's the three methods of joining. And finally, we've got here, we've got Manage Characters. Again, this is for players. Um, and you have got another screen here which you need to select the rule set whichever rule sets you've got available and it's the same principle you've got extensions which you can uh, uh, select and then down here is the campaigns in which you have already got characters again this could be completely blank if you have never created a character or joined a campaign or there could be many depending on how many games uh, or campaigns that you've uh, played in um, if you want to, to see particular characters from a certain campaign then obviously you've got to check uh, this campaign so if we click on this one and then click the start button it'll load up any characters that you've created in that uh, campaign uh, the buttons down the bottom here, uh, this one check for updates. If this is red or is lit up, um, then that means that Fantasy Grounds has got some updates either to the software itself or to some uh, uh, downloadable content that you've purchased. Uh, and it'll uh, flash up red and you would click that and Fantasy Grounds will then update uh, whatever needs to be done. Uh, yes, and then there's the settings button here, and uh, if we have a look at the, the user guide, this shows you what the settings uh, are. So your license key goes up into the uh, top if you have a license. If you've purchased the software, then you'll have a license key. So that's what goes in there. And then you've got the uh, general directories where the, the, the Fantasy Grounds installed, this is where the installation folder would be and the data directory is where your data is stored. You've got the UI scale and you've got various things for your purchases login. This will be your username that's in here uh, and then you've got uh, enhanced logging and then various uh, 
updates, etc. Uh, you don't need to worry about the mode. It should always be live generally. And then you can click the OK button from there. Um, you can also see uh, just on the data directory here, if we look up in the top right hand side here, we've got a little folder icon. And if we click on that, this will tell you where your data is stored. Uh, and this is the campaign data uh, and all the other data that Fantasy Grounds uses. So Fantasy Grounds, the program, is loaded in one place and your data is stored elsewhere. Uh, so you can see various folders here. If we click on campaigns, then this shows all the campaigns that I have got. And if we click on any one of these, uh, it'll show you further information as to what's in those campaign folders. You don't need to know exactly what this is all about at this time, but it maybe it's useful to know where your campaigns are actually being stored. Um, and uh, that's it, I think, for the uh, first video. Um, and the next one, uh, we'll cover some basics of the actual interface once we've loaded up uh, a campaign. Thanks for watching.